Hi, Jim Winslow here. Remember me, the old guy with the physics hobby? Well, last time I spoke to you about the spatially varying speed of light and how that causes gravitational lensing. Well, today I'm going to talk to you about the relationship between the speed of light and gravity. Light versus gravity. To get started, I'm going to talk about centripetal acceleration. You can look this up online, but I'm going to give you, give you a quick overview. Centripetal acceleration is acceleration experienced while in uniform circular motion. It always points towards the center of rotation. One experiences centripetal acceleration when a car rounds a corner. So here's a car going around a corner. Here's the center of rotation. Okay, R is the distance from the center of rotation to the car. And V is the magnitude of the velocity of the car. Now, when you step on the accelerator of a car, the velocity magnitude actually increases, okay? And you feel the acceleration. Centripetal acceleration is caused by, not by the magnitude of the velocity increasing, but by the direction of the velocity increasing. So basically in this situation, when you're going around a corner, the velocity magnitude is not increasing, but the direction is increasing, and you are experiencing an acceleration downward towards the center of rotation. The road is pressing on the tires of the car. The car tires are pressing on your car and your feet and that's what you feel when you're going around a corner. Before we go further, here's some terminology. T is time. Theta is an angle in radians. For example, 2 pi radians is equivalent to 360 degrees pi radians is equivalent to 180 degrees, etc. Frequency is, is in units of 1 over seconds, and it's a measure of how many times something happens per second. So for instance, uh, if something is going around 100 times in a circle per second, 100 times a second, the frequency would be 100. Now we have a concept of omega. That would be 2 pi, pi times the frequency and that is your angular velocity, and it's in radians per second. Um, it's a measure of the angle and how it, much it increases per second. Now we have some vector math here, and we have three vectors, r, v, and a. Each vector has magnitude and direction. So for instance, r would, could, be could be representing a rod pointed in a particular direction. Now these two parallel uh, vertical pipes mean take the magnitude of R. So if you had a rod and it was pointed in a direction, R is basically the length of the rod. Okay? We have the same thing with velocity. Velocity when, for instance, let's say you're going north at 60 miles per hour, your speed is 60 miles per hour while your direction is north. In that case, V would be the magnitude of this vector. Same thing with acceleration. Okay, so now we're going to go to the concept of a wavefront rotating rod. Just forget the wavefront part for now. That'll come up later. But here's a rod, and it is rotating around a center point. It's going around and around and around. Now, theta is the measure of from the horizontal to this rod. Okay, it's the angle between the horizontal and the rod. And this is increasing. Theta is always increasing, so this rod is rotating. Theta is equal to omega times t. t is time, omega is a constant, okay? So as time goes on, theta gets larger, okay? And represents how fast this rod is spinning around here. If omega is large, it's spinning fast. If omega is small, it's spinning slowly, okay? What's really important is what's going along along this rod. So along this rod, you're starting here at the center, at the center of rotation, you're moving up here, up to here, here you are traveling at a certain speed this way, which is V. V is related to R and omega by this equation. So V here is a particular value. If you move down the rod, V is less. If you move up further, V is greater. Lastly, you have the acceleration. The acceleration at each point is according to this equation, okay? Omega squared, again a constant, times R. 
So acceleration is high up here and low down here. So from the previous slide, we had A equals R omega squared. So that's R omega times omega. V equals R omega. We can substitute V into here, replace for R omega. Now, if we take the derivative of V with respect to R, we get omega, OK? That's just basic algebra, uh, basic pre-calc. And so dV dr, so omega equals dV dr. So we do a substitution of this and this into here. And what we get is A equals acceleration V times dV dr. Now, this is just the basic equations of centripetal acceleration, but in a form that's not very common. It's useful for us, though. Here's where things get profound, OK? You have here the rotating rod where V, the speed, is high up here and low here. Same thing for the sun, where a large mass of water C is high here and low as you approach the sun. Over the wavefront rotating rod, we have an acceleration. Here, we also have an acceleration, and that's the acceleration due to gravity. So, take a close look at this. Here is the wavefront rotating rod equation for acceleration. Substitute g for a and v for c for v, and you get g equals c times dc dr. This equation relates the acceleration due to gravity to the speed of light. Gets a little better, so let's do a little bit of algebra. Here's an algebraic trick where we take the speed of light squared, we take the derivative of it with respect to r times one half, and we get the same equation. But there's no direction with this equation, so here's the final equation right here. This symbol here, this upside down triangle and arrow, arrow is a gradient. Gradient is defined as direction and rate of fastest increase. So let's say you were out in space and you could measure the speed of light squared where you are and all around you. This gradient in front of C squared, okay, is the direction in which light speed is increasing the most, okay? And the magnitude is the rate of increase. Gravity pulls the other way, so we have a minus sign here. So here's the final equation. Well, before we go on, let's go back to the original post postulates, just as a summary. So there's the first postulate, the spatial variation of the speed of light. Light speed is lower due to the proximity magnitude of mass. The cause of gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing is caused by the spatial variation of the speed of light. And last but not least, postulate three, the relationship between gravity and the speed of light. Gravity is related to the speed of light according to the equation g, which is the gravitational vector, equals minus one half the gradient of the speed of light squared. Okay, so that's a uh, pretty profound and provocative statement. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And tune in next time where we come up with the equation for the speed of light squared. Thank you very much.